We finally know what's coming for the rest of the year with the new roadmap. Season 76 is going live this summer and despite the recent hotfix for the stash bug, there is another duplication glitch live. Oh, and allies can become thieves. It's news time. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. There is so much to cover today, it has been absolutely crazy. As you surely know by now, Bethesda released a bomb yesterday, a good one in this case, which is the roadmap for the following months with almost 20 new features. They also introduced their upcoming Seasons 76, which will be a season pass system for Fallout 76. It's a lot of information at once, but I will try my best to make it simple for you. Now, I have got even more news for you. I will go over the recent hotfix, the new duplication glitch that is currently live, the recent login problems, as well as how companions can steal dropped items from you. Heck, even the sun appears to be larger right now. Here is another batch of news, so let's jump right into the roadmap in Seasons 76. Let's go! Well, I must say I'm not impressed with this new roadmap because, to be honest with you, most of these features have been announced one way or the other through past events, especially through the latest Reddit AMA event, but regardless, I will comment on every single one of them whenever it's relevant. So the roadmap starts with the summer seasons, where we will get the seasons 76 system, which I will go over in details in the next point. But basically, this is a new season pass system where the daily and weekly challenges will be reworked with a new currency called score and lots of unique daily rewards. Next, we have the legendary perk system, at long last, and players above level 50 will access new perk slots and unique perk cards as well. I'm very curious to see how will this all work out, until then we have to wait. We have also the public team system to make it easier to find a team in game for anything you want to do. The Wendigo Colossus will be part of a new public event called a Colossal Problem. I guess it will be like the Scorch Earth event right now, where you must nuke a certain location and then you start the new event. It's about time. We really need an alternative to the Scorch Beast Queen and I think this one will be just what we are looking for. The Fashion of Parade is also returning, but I wonder if we are going to get it twice this year because first, it got massively delayed and secondly, it's supposed to go live this month in May, not in June, when the summer starts, as stated in this roadmap. That's weird, maybe it will go live twice after all. I'm not complaining. They also said the seasonal event Meet Week is going to come back this summer and there will be some community challenges. Probably something like the Clean Appalachia one that went live last year. Moving to autumn or fall, we will get the One Wasteland system, which will scale all enemies and region levels in the map to your own level. There will be a new reward system and a rebalanced combat system as well. Now, I'm very skeptical about this one, I hope we won't have to hit the Red Roach 10 times to kill it, for example. I mean, the concept sounds great, but you gotta differentiate a level 10 from a level 500. If a high player wants to do less damage, he or she can just use a pleb weapon. I do it all the time in events like Iranian Fever, just so I don't want to hit the legendary bosses. It's very easy to do. Oh well, I hope it will be a pleasant experience, but I really have my doubts here. The great surprise for Autumn is the return of the Brotherhood of Steel. Hell yeah! We will get a new questline called Steel Dawn and I'm sure it will be amazing. After all, they have been watching us according to Bethesda. There will be a new Bombs Town event, surely related to nukes, in which way we don't know yet. Finally, we have a Season 2 refresh for the Season Pass and the Daily Ops system, which will be some sort of do this, do that to earn scaling rewards. It sounds like daily challenges to me, but with a twist. 
Anyway, let's move on to the winter time where we are getting more Brotherhood of Steel content, where this faction is finally returning to Appalachia to search for technology. We are getting more quests, more NPCs, and even companions. Wow, that's something a lot of people are going to love. Another exciting feature is the expansion for the camp system. We are getting shelters or instance camps with more budget. It's funny because I have recently covered this topic, which was a highly voted suggestion over Reddit a week ago, and now we are really going to get it. Thumbs up to Bethesda for making this possible for us. It's surely going to be a hit. Everyone wants more camp budget? Just saying. Next, we have the park loadouts, which is currently a mod and a very useful one. So it's about time to make it an official feature. Bring it on. We are also getting some sort of expedition system with repeatable missions. I guess it will be a rework for Vault Raids and Vault 94, which is now closed. I hope it will be more interesting, engaging and easier to do, at least. Finally, Season 3 will start in the winter time. We will get more daily ops, I guess new tasks to do for some diversity. And the Holiday Scorched event will return for Christmas, I am assuming, just like it happened in 2019. Overall, we have a lot of new and exciting content coming until the end of the year, and that's everything we could hope for. Well, we also need a lot of bug and glitch fixes, but that's another story. Besides the roadmap, Bethesda has also announced a new Seasons 76 system. They also released a very extensive article with all the details, and I must confess that I have mixed feelings about it so far. But that's probably a topic for an opinion video. This feature is going live with update 20 this summer and it is basically a rework for the daily and weekly challenges. It's a progressive season pass with the same defined and exclusive rewards for everyone. However, you will need to earn score and your currency in order to unlock the different ranks. There will be 100 ranks in total per season and Bethesda plans to have 4 seasons per year. Now, daily and weekly challenges will change. They will no longer reward atoms, they will reward score instead. They will also become easier to do, such as killing a legendary boss or leveling up once. Bethesda wants these challenges to become things we already do while playing normally, to prevent players from going out of their way too much. You will be able to earn score by earning experience and by completing public events as well. Now, you may be wondering how long does it take per rank up? Bethesda claims you need 1 hour for the early ranks and around 2 hours for the top ranks. That's quite concerning since there are 100 ranks in total. That's over 3 months. Now, if you need 1 or 2 hours per rank, that could mean you need 200 hours to complete the entire season pass, and that's crazy. Let's hope things will be easier and not as time-consuming as the first impressions indicate. Moving forward, you will be able to unlock as many ranks as you want using atoms, which means people can just pay to get it all if they want, which is fine. Both paths are open here, the free path with lots of invested hours and the paid path with lots of money invested. You can use 150 atoms to unlock just one or a few tiers if you want. It's always great to have a choice, you know. Anyhow, you can collect your season rewards by accessing a new tab, clicking directly on the board slots. Each rank will reward you with something different. It could be caps, atoms, an outfit, a camp item, a skin, and so many other things that Bethesda is preparing for us. In general, the lower ranks feature lower rewards in contrast with the really nice stuff which will be unlocked at the top ranks. It makes sense, no? Once you reach rank 100, you will unlock the end of season bundle with lots of unique goodies inside of it, which includes the following items shown by Bethesda, Two power armor skins, a Gatling gun skin, the jungles, the moon monkey stain, a fireplace door, which is kind of a secret door, and even a new galaxy lamp with lots of cool lightning effects. 
that's pretty much the summary and everything you need to know about this upcoming system. Overall, we will earn less atoms, but there's a lot of other things you can earn, which makes the system more inclusive, in my opinion. It's better for everyone in general, from casual players, from new players to veterans. But we will see, maybe things won't work exactly as they have explained so far. Alright, after a few weeks we finally got a fix for the major stash bug that could randomly add stored items for sale through the player vending machine or give it for free through drinking bowl items. It's now safe to bring these camp items back, it's time to return to business. However, keep in mind that some of your items might be set with the wrong values in the vending machines or may have returned to the stash, so make sure to check them out. These are the two after effects of the hotfix that went live last Wednesday, May 13. Now, I'm a bit wary of this fix because it might not have fixed the problem entirely. It wouldn't be the first time. Only time will tell though. Let's hope nobody else will lose their stash items in the meanwhile. That would be fantastic news. Now, this week's hotfix didn't just solve the stash bug. A recent duplication glitch that was made public some days ago was also patched with this hotfix and it no longer works, thankfully. Plenty of great news so far, but sadly, a new one has already been discovered. It was disclosed yesterday, a few hours after the hotfix went live, actually. I was very surprised to learn about it because it's the second duplication glitch in one week. Bethesda doesn't get a break here. Anyway, some people are duplicating all sorts of items, including Nuka Colas for caps, legendary modules, holiday presents, ammo, and so many other things. It's quite disappointing to see part of the community embracing cheats like they are something amazing, something to cherish for, when it should be the opposite. Well, while I was making this video, Bethesda has just disabled display cases to prevent people from using this new uh, duplication glitch any longer, so expect the fix to go live in the following days while the display cases are offline, or disabled in this case. Now, let's just hope a new duplication glitch won't go live yet again, because it has been so terrible in this department. Right after the hotfix went live, dozens of players were not able to log in for some reason. Both the forums and Reddit got flooded with posts about this. Some even thought there was some sort of ban wave that was going on, but that was not the case. There was a temporary issue with the login servers and it got quickly solved, thankfully. About one hour after the hotfix was released, everything was back to normal already, as an employee confirmed through the Bethesda's forms. So don't worry if you weren't able to log in right after the hotfix. It was a problem on their end, not yours. You did nothing wrong, so don't worry about it. Recently, it came to my attention that companions can steal dropped items when they are in combat mode. This could be dangerous for you if you don't know how it works, but it could also become an advantage. The general rule is, do not drop any valuable ammo or weapons near companions, because you never know when an enemy wave will spawn at the camp you are at, whether it's yours or somebody else. As far as I know, they do not loot anything else other than weapons, not even armor pieces. Now, this is a way to force your companions to equip certain weapons, including a lip. I have dropped a 3 stars minigun with ammo during a quick fight and at first my Dagehe didn't pick it up. I guess it was too far from her radius. Then I dropped it again near her and she quickly picked it up and started using it to kill the enemies. Now she can defend my camp much better and that's great, don't you think? This trick seems to work for every companion so far, major and minor ones as well. I also tried with uh, Wanderer and she picked up a 3 stars shotgun as well. It took her a long time though, so you need to drop it right near them, otherwise they will ignore it for some reason. Well, this is a way to customize their weapons, you can give them any ranged weapon you want, they just don't pick uh, melee weapons for some reason, but 
That's better than nothing, I think. Have you noticed something different with the sun? I surely did, and I decided to compare recent footage with some I have before the hotfix at the same location, around the prime fissure and the overgrown groove at the cranberry bog. As you can see, after the hotfix, the sun looks much larger in contrast with footage from a few days ago, where the sun appears much smaller. Now, this change doesn't appear anywhere, but it's real. Unless it's a new bug, I need to test it even further while doing cinematics. But for now, it looks like Bethesda has increased the size of the sun for some reason. I must say, it does look better, so let's hope it will stay that way. Another thing I noticed right after the hotfix is that servers seem to be unstable, more than usual at least. My private server kicked me out two times in about one hour, and that's already strange enough for me, because I rarely crash or get kicked from private worlds. Then I joined a few friends in a public server and suddenly all of us got kicked from the server, which makes me believe there is or was something wrong with the server stability. It has been a while since I experienced such a problem, so it may be related to the login issues I reported earlier. It's probably all connected. I just hope it doesn't keep happening because in this case Mio Mori was doing a silo run and she got kicked right in the middle of it. That's never a pleasant experience when you are interrupted mid-event or mid-quest. I'm sure you guys agree with this one. Well, we were supposed to get another free experience event this weekend, but nope, Bethesda changed their mind and now we are getting a free weekend instead. Everyone who doesn't own Fallout 76 can now play the game for free to try it out. If you do so, keep in mind that your progress will be saved and later on if you decide to buy the game, you can simply resume your progress, whether it's on Bethesda's client or through Steam. I haven't seen anything about double experience again, and in game there is no buff either, which means they have really changed their minds and this weekend is a free access instead. So enjoy it everyone! What if we had ghouls on a treadmill or mole rats on a wheel to produce energy and power up your workshops or camps? That sounds like a very creative way and realistic idea for future content. I have recently seen this suggestion over Reddit and I had to cover it. I would totally buy it for my camp because first, it sounds hilarious, secondly, it would be a nice thing to watch rather than a plane generator and well, it would be great to be able to choose your energy production methods, no? We already have generators, the windmill, and now the recently added water mill, so why not a ghoul on a treadmill to fit the new reality of the wasteland, hmm? What do you guys think about this one? Lastly, I want to share this major camera bug that has been affecting me ever since the hotfix came live. In the third person mode, you basically can see anything. You get this super zoom bug where you can hardly see your character and it's on the very left side. If you try to use the normal zoom, the maximum you can see is half of your character when you are supposed to see the entire body. It's not only the movement that becomes harder with this bug, it's also when you try to access terminals, for example. Most of it, it's off your screen. You can't read or see or select the options. It's really bothersome. I have been playing in first mode for a change. Restarting the game and changing servers doesn't help. I hope they fix this one soon, otherwise I have to give up on the third person mode for the time being. Well, that was a very long news video, so I won't extend it much further. I'm currently working on a new CAPS guide, so expect it to go live very soon. Thank you for watching and I hope I could keep you up to date with everything Fallout 76. I'm really glad we are getting tons of new content until the end of the year, and it's great to see Bethesda acting faster towards new glitches and bugs. Now, feel free to comment below and leave a like if you enjoyed the content, 
mind. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and you can also support me even further if you wish. The links are right below the video. That's really everything for now. Thank you again and I will see you very very soon in the next one. Take care. Adios. Bye bye.